What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 video. But yeah, I mean, I this is going to be a weird video because it's been a week since the World Championships. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about the results of the World Championships, but also just what to do going forward if you want to prepare for VGC in Scarlet and Violet. Because uh, this is actually a little bit of a nuanced thing to take a look at. But yeah, uh, before we get into the results and anything else, do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content and answer my comment question of the day. What will you be doing in the postseason leading up to the next VGC season? So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So let's start off this video by talking about the results from the VGC 2022 World Championships. Before we start, big shout out to Eduardo Kuna, who won the World Championships using a Zacian, Calyrex, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Gastrodon, and Thunderous team. I think in the middle of the season, this was probably my favorite team going around because I was actually a big fan of the way that the team played with balance. However, I was more of a fan of running a Blastoise or a G-Max Blastoise over Gastrodon uh, as I, I found it to be a little bit more offensive, and I really enjoyed having that Kanto residual damage privilege on my team. Uh, but I think Gastronon was definitely the right play, helps you out in so many situations. So once again, congratulations to him. But let's go ahead and take a look at all the other teams. So what I have done is I've taken a look at the results from the event, and I have the number of each restricted that we saw in the top 26 teams. So let's start with that. In total, we saw 16 Zacians, 12 Kyogres, 7 Groudons, 4 Calyrex Shadows, 3 Calyrex Ice, 3 Lunala, 3 Palkia, 2 Eveltal, and 1 Dialga. Something I will say is despite the uh, top teams having a lot of Zacian representation, it wasn't the Zacian hellscape that so many people thought it was going to be. Personally, I'm not annoyed by how many Zacian there are because... It's just how the format is. It's just how like Pokemon is. When you when there's a really good Pokemon, it's gonna make its way onto a lot of teams. And while it might be on every single team, it's definitely not mandatory to win the World Championships. As you can see, second place was the Lunala Groudon team. There's a lot of ways around it. We even have the perpetually fourth place Calyrex Ice and Palkia. If you've been watching or if you've been following all of my tournament coverage uh, throughout the series, I've been saying Calyrex Palkia needs to get a, a top one finish. It needs to win some tournament sometime soon because it's really good. And every single time, I feel like it's been fourth place. So Paul Chua, congratulations on bringing it to the place it deserves to be, I suppose. So yeah. Uh, James Beck, shout out James. Greatest content creator. Uh, big inspiration for the channel. I uh, was running a Zacian Kyogre team with... Uh, I believe it was Choice Banded Rillaboom, uh, Ndidi, Tornadus, Incineroar. Uh, once again, Paul Chua stand running a pretty standard Calyrex Palkia team. Uh, we see more uh, hyper offensive, balancey um, Zacian plus Calyrex. Uh, let me actually zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. Just want to make sure it's actually visible to you guys. Uh, da -da -da. Megan Rattle running a Celesteela team, which is actually pretty interesting. Um, you don't typically see Celesteela in this format, uh, and I don't remember watching any of Megan's teams or any of Megan's matches. Uh, however, I would assume that in VGC 2022 Series 12, this thing would have to have wide guard. Um, yeah, I mean, Celesteela is pretty interesting. It can go offensive, you know, obviously it has the option for Meteor Beam, has the option to max and be like a super strong max Airstream user, but I think for a restricted format, it's going to have to be like a supportive wide guard set, and I've seen that do a lot of work before. We see uh, some Rinya Sun. Uh, actually, it's not perfectly Rinya Sun. I'm pretty sure Rinya Sun had like, you know, Thunderous on it. Or I might be forgetting. I'm pretty sure Rinya Sun had Thunderous. Uh, do more, uh, more Lunaldon. Uh, we have a Shedinja, which obviously ally switch Shedinja is pretty annoying, but something that's interesting to note is this is a Landorus Incarnate. Landorus Incarnate is not something you typically see, uh, strictly due to the fact that Landorus Therian is a bit better when Dynamax is legal. Uh, when Dynamax is not legal, I would say Landorus I is about as viable as uh, Landorus Therian, just not as offensive. Um, or just Landers Therian isn't as offensive. Landers Eye has to go on the offensive. It has access to Sheer Force, Life Orb, Earth Power, which is absurdly high damage. It has Rock Slide. It has a lot of tools. So, yeah. I, I do like seeing Landers Eye in Top Cut. I think that's really cool. 
Uh, we'd see some more Rinya Sun looking stuff. Dialga and Eveltal is actually a duo I was hoping to see. And the uh, Gyarados is also something that's pretty interesting. Sorry, I'm just trying to load up the paste for this team. I want to take a look at this. Charty Berry, Gyarados, that's pretty mandatory, I think, in this format. You want to make sure you don't get one shot by Max Lightnings. Uh, and Gyarados does have the bulk to take that sort of thing. So, um, Choice Banded Landers there. This, this dude was on something. This dude was on something when they made this team. Power Gem, uh, Assault Vest, Oblivion Wing. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty interesting team. I, I don't really have too many notes. I didn't get to watch any matches of it. I was pretty busy this weekend. That's why I'm, like, super late on coverage. Uh, and also, I'm pretty sure that, like, the info just came out. Uh, we see more Rinya Sun looking stuff. We see <laughs> the uh, Shedinja. Uh, we see, like, you know, identical Shedinja and uh, Zacian Kyogre teams. We all know how good Ally Switch is on that. Uh, we see more Zacian Kyogre. And we have the top 16 team, Tetsuya Watanaki, or Watanuki, absolutely robbed by a disconnect, uh, sharing the dual weather plus Golisopod team. This is a very interesting team to watch. I believe it was like weakness policy on, yeah. Weakness policy Kyogre, a fast, fast, fast uh, Groudon with uh, Life Orb. And the reason that you need to be fast Groudon on dual weather, and I've said this before on the channel, but I feel like I should repeat it. Uh, you need to be fast Groudon on dual weather teams, uh, especially when you have a Kyogre, because you want to be able to lead off Kyogre and Groudon and not have the Kyogre be stunted by the uh, Groudon Sun. So by having Kyogre be just marginally slower, it allows you to have the rain go up second, letting Kyogre and Groudon both hit their signature moves for maximum damage. So yeah, uh, Assault Vest Golisopod is so cool. Uh, Leech Life, Draw Run, Sucker Punch, First Impression. This thing was living everything. It was able to pivot out for Incineroar a lot. Like Incineroar, Golisopod, and Volt Switch, Raikou are such a crazy trio that can just pivot in on everything and defensively cover each other so well. Like, Golisopod and Incineroar both take Zacian super easily, however, Golisopod's able to switch in on, like, Sacred Swords, um, and they, everything takes Behemoth Blade, like, one, two, three, four Behemoth Blade resists, one just straight up Zacian counter, and, like, a Tailwind Pokemon, like, this is really cool. So, yeah, I, I think if you're gonna beat Zacian, you need to be able to be, you know, you need if you're gonna, like, run Dual Weather in a format like this, you need to have, like, so many Zacian checks. So, yeah, congratulations on Tetsuya going so far in the tournament, even if it ended uh, in a pretty annoying way, because, you know, he didn't even get prize money. That's that's the, I don't know, I, I already shared my thoughts on it, but yeah. Uh, we see uh, just some more Kyogre, Zacian, uh, the Trick Room teams. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's not too much else going on here. I think the only super notable things from now on are the, or is uh, Nils Dunlop's um, Evil Kyogre team, which Evil Ogre is something that we haven't seen in a long time. I think Evil Ogre kind of got ruined this format by the fact that we have so many good offensive electric types, uh, like Regieleki running around. Like Dynamax Regieleki and Dynamax Thunderous are so annoying for Evil Tall plus Kyogre. And this team doesn't have a lot of ways of dealing with it, so I'm not sure what the like plan is for beating those things. I would imagine that the plan is just like Electroweb into like foul play, maybe? I don't have information on, on how this would like beat Thunderous lead, but yeah. Uh, we see Brady Smith running that balance team once, once again. And of course, we see this team. I believe this is going to be Noah Tax Gothitelle. Yep, Noah Tax Gothitelle. We've seen this team do so well in this format, and it's just so interesting to see it continue to do well to the point where it's top cutting at Worlds. So yeah, that's going to be it for the tournament coverage. I don't have too many thoughts. Obviously, once again, congratulations to Edu. Congratulations to everyone who top cut and did well. There's a ton of teams here that I'm not going to go through. We have so much info that it's probably not worth going over all of it. Uh, but the information is going to be linked down in the description down below. Uh, but going on, we need to talk about the end of VGC 2022. This is a really strange time to be a VGC competitor um, because it's like, as a, as a VGC competitor, we have nothing to do. We have to wait until Scarlet and Violet come out to have a format that's playable. We're essentially in the off season until January because I don't know if you guys uh, heard the announcement. Uh, there will be no VGC tournaments occurring at regional events until January when uh, the new games come out. So there will not be a Sword and Shield. We are playing for a couple of months and it's going to count towards 2023, like like we did with every other game. Uh, and that might be because Mega Kangaskhan qualified for Worlds this year, technically, because it was points carried over from 2019. But 
there's a whole video I did on that, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with that. They're rethinking the tournament structure, and because of that, we're only having events starting in 2023. So there's a lot of stuff that we have to consider going forward. How can you best prepare as a tournament competitor for a metagame that we have no info on, or very little info on, uh, that we... We have Dynamax in all of like almost all of our formats right now. So so what do you do to get better uh, and like practice and still be able to go into Scarlet and Violet at your like 110% capacity? I would say you don't want to play Dynamax right now. Uh, series 13, have fun with it. I think Series 13 is going to be fun. I'm going to be making content on it, but I and I and a few other people, I'm going to try to like encourage my fellow content creators to do Spike Myth Cup content. I really want the community to get into Spike Myth, uh, Spike Myth Cup content. If you don't know what it is, Spike Myth Cup is a tournament format that has been running in the VGC Room Tour a lot. Hold on, let me see if it's still running. Let me see if there's one running right now. Yeah, literally as I'm recording this, there's a Spike Myth Cup match going on, which we'll hop into for visuals. As you can see, Spike Myth Cup has no Dynamax option. Spike Myth Cup is going to be VGC Series 7 and Series 9 with no Dynamax. It is pure Pokemon, and it is the best way for you to practice your fundamentals going into the new generation. I think that because I was going to say, like, maybe you want to play BDSP. BDSP is truly an option that you could have for practicing your fundamentals. The issue is while BDSP is technically a newer game than Sword and Shield, while BDSP does have all the fundamentals that you can use to practice, you're not going to find as big of a community playing that as there is going to be on Sword and Shield, just because the multiplayer is so much easier to access in Sword and Shield. Uh, so yeah, like I've been saying, this is good for fundamentals. Uh, with Dynamax being the format that we've been playing for three years, some people aren't used to playing in a not Dynamax format. And what does that mean? That means that now we're going to be seeing things that Dynamax would discourage. Weight-based moves. We're going to see the return of low kick, heavy slam, heat crash. Um, speed control is going to be so much more valuable because max airstream is no longer a viable option for dealing with that sort of situation. Uh, we're going to see things like Urshifu rock the metagame. Uh, and you're going to have to have answers for that sort of thing that don't involve Dynamaxing and living the hit. So there's a lot going on. Um, while while I am a big Dynamax hater, while I am the biggest Dynamax hater, I would say, on YouTube, uh, I, I will say that it isn't a bad thing to be good at. It's a different thing to be good at. Um, it's not that bad players prefer Dynamax. It's that it's a different skill set that some people have and some people don't. And practicing for Dynamax and non-Dynamax is night and day. I would say focus your time getting into tournaments that are hosted by people like Rose Tower, by people like uh, VR, Victory Road, uh, and just community online ladder tournaments. Get into those. You need to be practicing non-Dynamax going into Scarlet and Violet if you want to be at, you know, 110%. And yeah, that's my advice. Uh, we can go ahead and look at a couple of... I haven't played Spike Myth Cup in a while, by the way. We can look at a few ongoing matches if there's more. Let me see. So yeah, here, looking at the teams, we see Zarina because Fake Out is so much more important to have in your team. Uh, let me go to the beginning. Here we go. So we see Urshifu, Zarina, uh, Dusclops, Tyranitar, Togekiss, Incineroar versus Rillaboom, Volcarona, Landorus, Incarnate, Alolan, Ninetales, Porygon 2, and Primarina. So here's the thing. When it comes to, like, no Dynamax formats, it's so much more important to be bulky. Dynamax formats, you can sort of play hyper offense, and while you can do it in non-Dynamax, it's a lot harder to play hyper offense because your opponent will have pivoting tools, it's much easier to live hits, and things like Intimidate won't be counteracted by, like, Max Knuckles, uh, things like Icy Wind won't be counteracted by uh, by Max Airstreams. It's, it's mostly a factor of being able to get into a good board positioning and maintaining it for the rest of the game until you can find an opening that allows you to just bust it wide open and start winning. Dynamax formats kind of have that. It's just that it's it's much easier to steamroll, so hyper offense sort of became the norm. But yeah, 
I, I think that that's about as much as I can share as far as like how to prepare for like Spike Myth Cup stuff and going into Scarlet and Violet. I just wanted to give my opinions on this sort of thing before we sort of make the transition. I will be doing Spike Myth Cup tournaments each weekend, I believe. I think I'm going to be doing that. I might host some like ladder tours, uh, but yeah. I want to get your thoughts on that too. What do you guys think about me doing some Spike with Cup content? I, I'm, I'm trying to encourage a lot of people to do it because I think it's the best thing for the community to get into before Scarlet and Violet. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, do me a favor, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications. Uh, and of course, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What will you be practicing? Uh, do you enjoy Spike Myth Cup? Will you be playing Series 13 anyways? I'm still going to be making Series 13 videos, but I'm, I'm going to be taking Spike Myth Cup a little bit more seriously. So yeah, have a nice night. Bye.